so what's going on? Welcome back to another ESL podcast. And today is about the wonderful Yodel Hotel Rooms. That's right. We're going to be diving into hotels again. And remember, we're going to be discussing hotel and travel over the next three to four seasons in very different ways, right? So I gave you guys a lot of my stories, but now this one's going to be based on an article and you answering some of those questions as we go along. Right. Then after that, I'll be presenting you guys with different adjectives and how you can use them in comparative form when you're explaining something. All right. Because, <clears throat> you know, there was uh, one individual, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful human being from uh, Japan. Her name's Misa. Big shout out to you, Misa. Living out there in the beautiful islands of Hawaii. And I know she's one of the, uh, you know, she's a person where her English is a little bit limited. Uh, have another girl who's been following me for a little bit, uh, probably just a couple of weeks, to be honest with you. She's from Kazakhstan, and I know that the listening could be difficult for her. So this is still good, because we're still developing language for some of you out there. Some of you may be very advanced, some of you may not be very advanced, but reading out different things to help you guys, this is going to be extraordinary, okay? Very, very good stuff. So in saying that, guys, what we have is a hotel chain called Yodel. I'm gonna be explaining to you what it is, but first I must give you the questions, all right? Now, obviously, you don't really have to worry about the questions, you could just listen to the article. Uh, the early access badge will be re-emerging very shortly on my new membership site, and you'll be able to purchase, you know, a monthly early access versus, you know, just uh, purchasing, oh my God, what is it? Purchasing just a one day, uh, what is it? I'm sorry. Uh, by, uh, what is it? My, every month, right? So instead of paying $5 a month, okay, you could pay $50 for the year and save uh, $10, right? So I'm putting, I'm going to start putting everything else out there. I still got a lot of videos and stuff to do, of course. So in saying that, huh, that's going to be coming out along with the Business English Podcast badge and everything else, okay? So here we go. Question number one. Yo tell, I'm going to say yo tell. I don't like saying Yodo because it sounds like Yoda, right? So Yotel rooms are standard three-star hotel rooms, true or false. Number two, you can't sit down in a Yotel room, true or false. Number three, Yotel aims to provide a service for office workers, true or false. Number four, only the premium Yotel rooms have natural light, true or false. Number five, Check-in is automated, but there is room service available. True or false? Number six, Yotel hopes that in any 24-hour period, more guests will stay in the hotel than there are rooms. True or false? Next, you can rent Yotel rooms by the hour. True or false? And the last question, the creator of Yotel thinks that travelers like having reduced space. So, and saying that, people, I'm going to read this article, and it's about the Yotel room at Gatwick, okay, Gatwick Airport out there in good old England. So, quote, the 46 rooms at Yotel Gatwick managed to squeeze a bed, a pull-up desk, closet space, a shower, and a flat screen TV into just seven square meters or 10 square meters for the premium class. The rooms have all the best features of first class air cabins. The result is clean and stylish, like the interior of a luxury yacht. The philosophy of Yotel is to provide luxury, but at an affordable price. To reduce costs, they use many of the features of budget flights, such as online only booking, self-service check-in, and a pricing policy which encourages early booking. The concept is really a Western adaptation of the Japanese capsule hotel. Double hyphen, ultra cheap accommodation for office workers who sleep in coffin-like plastic modules stacked on top of each other. This is ideal for sites where space is limited like airports and city centers. Of course, Yotel rooms are bigger than the Japanese capsules. They are also more luxurious than the average three-star hotel room. Each soundproof cabin contains a sofa, 
that converts into a double bed and leaves space for your suitcase underneath. A soft white gray, white and gray color scheme and lots of glass and mirrors gives an impression of light and airness. On the other hand, there is no natural light as the premium cabins have only a window onto the corridor. And in standard class, there is no window at all. Yotel want to become the iPod of the hotel industry. They are hoping that techie travelers won't mind booking into a small but well-designed box field with electronic gadgets. There are 60 TV channels, who the fuck watches TV anymore? 80 radio channels, who the fuck listens to the radio anymore? And 5,000 music tracks. I have my own music, thank you, but thanks for the appreciation. As well as wireless internet to keep you entertained if you find it difficult to get to sleep. You can order food through the TV and it is delivered promptly by the cabin crew and take away boxes with wooden cutlery. Any hotel in the world aims for 100% occupancy. Not now, but Yotel aims for better than 200% occupancy. There are travelers who stay the night, another group who check in for four or five hours of rest in the morning, and finally, the afternoon guests looking for a more comfortable place than the airport terminal to have a siesta. The standard room cost is 55 pounds for the night or 25 for a four-hour slot, the minimum. Premium costs are 40 pounds for four hours and 80 pounds overnight. So we're basically saying, and I'm going to interrupt here, it's probably about 70, about 80 US, okay, for a standard room. Uh, I would have to say probably about 42 US for a, a four hour slot. And then you got the premium cast. Uh, I'm sorry, the premium is at about, oh my God, I don't know, 70 US, 65 to 70 US for four hours. And then obviously over 100 for overnight. Now let's get back into this. Last paragraph. If you have an early morning flight, a long wait between flights, or an unexpected delay, Yotel offers an attractive option. At first sight, it may seem a little claustrophobic, meaning if there are no windows, you might start freaking out. Kind of feel like that sometimes. But its creator, Simon Woodruff, believes that this compensates for the quality of the product. Ask a focus group if they would like to sleep in a 10 square meter room with no natural light and you won't get many takers. Walk into a Yotel room and you want it, he says, right? So let me say that one more time because I completely forgot there was a quote. Ask a focus group if they would like to sleep in a 10 square meter room with no natural light and you won't get many takers. Walk into a Yotel room and you want it, he says. Yotel has plans to open more Yotels at airports around the world. So there it is, people. Very, very fascinating. Obviously, I'm not sure if all of you have traveled to Japan. Obviously not. But, of course, my beautiful Japanese, who you guys listen to me, you guys are, are aware of the capsule hotels. Um, very claustrophobic because all you have is probably just a very small window. I don't even know if there is a window. Um, but, oh, my God. Like, being in one of those, I mean, budget-friendly people, backpackers, fantastic. But me, no way. Now, your hotel room, I don't know. By looking at the picture, and you guys can actually look this up, it doesn't look terrible. Now, remember, I told you guys about my story staying at Singapore Airport, and I had the likes of being in a beautiful, beautiful cabin. Um, what is it? But it was a transit hotel, not a Yotel. Yotel is smaller. A hotel, I walked in, this thing had two massive beds, the best shower in the world. It had all electro electronic, pro uh, what is it? Um, what is it? Electronic things that I could plug in. I booked it for six hours. I went immediately to sleep. And then I woke up just before, packed everything up, walked right out and I was in the terminal. And my flight was probably within those two and a half hours. So I got breakfast and then that was it. I mean, it was a phenomenal, it was just phenomenal beyond belief. And then after that, obviously taking a six hour flight from there all the way to Japan and then obviously getting that food poisoning before landing in LA. And then after LA, going to the good old Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport to get picked up by one of my ex-friends. <laughs> but anyways, um, is this a viable option? Absolutely. 
right? He said luxurious, okay? Luxurious meaning like if you go to some of these transit hotels, anything in Singapore, that is beyond luxurious. But things could also be very standard, such as going and paying for a $100 a night hotel in Tokyo. You would get your standard maybe a step below Yodel, but with just maybe an extra couple of square meters, right? You're going to have to pay at least 150 a night in Tokyo to get something that's spacious because they really use all of their space, period, right? There's not much space to be had out there in Tokyo, nor there is out there in Korea. Um, but if you pay 100 a night in America, you're, you're staying at a roach motel is what we call it. Um, the carpet is dirty. Uh, the beds are very old fashioned. They have 1980 lamps in there. Um, and it's very dodgy. This is a place where men would take uh, women uh, who sell services. <laughs> okay. Um, but again, it's like a one-stop shop. Okay, you got your vending machine. There isn't much that you can eat. There could be a diner where somebody cooks up some things, but that's practically it, you know? So, luxurious, I don't mind if I'm only staying there very quickly, but listen, I told you guys that I stayed at $20 a night roach-infested hotels uh, back in Sukhumvit. I remember, Sukhumvit meaning like in downtown Bangkok. I remember, you know, uh, being with my friend inside the hotel, okay, she was going home, so I dropped her off at the little sky train, then I walked back to my hotel, opened it up, and there were roaches all over the bed, all over the wall, everywhere. I couldn't believe it. And it was just disgusting. And then I told myself, I said, Arsenio, you're going to have to stop being cheap because you have absolutely no business. And again, I can't really, oh, well, yeah, I had all the business in the world staying there because I wasn't getting paid much money at all my first year here in Thailand, okay? Didn't have any experience, didn't know really what much what I was doing. I was just teaching little kids. Uh, and so paying like $100 a night, that was way out of the question because that would be literally like 15% of my monthly salary. Right? I mean, it's crazy, right? Now, obviously, oh, 100 a night, no problem. I boosted up to like 45. What is it? 150 a night. But back then, uh-uh, right? So it's good to know that I actually moved up in the world. But now, luxurious, and I love it because I do travel with my friend too. And so we set a budget of about, we go no higher than maybe, maybe 170 a night right? But there's got to be excellent things there. It has to be, like, we stayed at Anantara, right? It was a one-night thing. It was 100 and, oh my god, $150? Just north of 150 So about $157, but that was a beyond, that was beyond a resort, right? We had a lagoon suite. The, the ceilings were about five meters high, I believe, okay? We had the most extraordinary balcony. We had all you can drink alcoholic beverages from 5 to 6 p.m. got completely inebriated, meaning drunk. Worst goddamn night of my life. So stupid me. Uh, the pool was extraordinary with the pool bar. The food, that breakfast was, oh my God, in the beach right there. I'm telling you, man, this, you did not have to leave that resort. That's how phenomenal it was. Making it the number one resort I had ever stayed at in my life. So, and saying that, luxurious, yes. Comfortable, beyond. Expensive, slightly. But when you have that up with a friend, you're only paying out of pocket probably $80. So it's not too bad. Expensive is like the Awalani Resort out there in good old, uh, what is it? Out there in Hawaii. I believe it's 400 US dollars a month. And again, it's a resort on the island. But when you're in Hawaii, you don't really need to stay at a resort. I mean, you could, but all you're going to do is just have Mickey Mouse and people dancing around and a whole bunch of doctors who are beyond posh and they're rude ass wives there i mean it was just a place that i did not like whatsoever now 400 a night at marina bay sands again given the fact that uh, how and what i saw in the rooms i'm like ah this really isn't worth it but the thing is at the top having that infinity pool that overlooks everything oh yeah now that is a 400 dollars view so expensive as hell right convenient absolutely there's a train right below marina bay sands uh, big rooms, nah, you know how Singapore is. Very similar to obviously Tokyo uh, and Malaysia. But Malaysia, <clears throat> if you go into KLCC rather than outside of KLCC, and if you pay, literally, if you pay $100 a night in Malaysia in the KLCC, Kuala Lumpur area, 
you are getting, oh my, it's five star. If you pay a hundred a night out there in America, it's one and a half stars and you're going to have roaches crawling across your face. All right, cheap as hell. Stylish. I don't care so much about stylish or stylish points, but when I used to go for my Spartan uh, travels, this is probably back in 2017 and 18 when I used to do the Spartan race because obviously I was still trying to overcome a lot of things mentally. Now I feel like I don't have to do those anymore. Plus with my knee, like after five to eight kilometers, it is not good, right? And so I would never put myself through that ever again because I don't need to. But nonetheless, um, when I did those and I went to obviously Malaysia and I did probably a few of them out there, I wanted to make sure I had everything there. So staying at the Sheraton Hotel, that was huge. Staying at uh, G Tower, which was an extraordinary hotel five years ago, but it's really trash now. Uh, very important for business travelers, right? So staying at different places, it just really all depends, right? You gotta know and pick your spots. But um, in saying that, a three-star hotel room is cheap, right? It's small, and it could be convenient. It all depends. But when you pay for a Japanese capsule, uh, it could be relaxing, it could be small, and it could be uh, relatively cheap. Uh, but if you pay for a five-star hotel room, it could be stylish, it could be luxurious, it could be expensive, it could be extremely big, it could be unbelievably comfortable, and it could be beyond relaxation. So, in saying that, people, that is your Yotel room. Go look that up on YouTube, obviously. I hope you guys got some of those adjectives and good things out of that, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. We're going to be talking about room service and other different things that would go along with, obviously, booking a hotel, and then we're going to be doing... Um, Obviously, some comparisons and in-company interviews and all that other good stuff. So, again, locating an office. Uh, we're going to be doing that, too. We're going to be putting some things together in terms of grammar. So, again, guys, if you are not signed up yet, I hope by now the Business English Podcast badge is available. That's available, obviously, for uh, annual subscription, too. So, if you guys are interested, let me know. But nonetheless, man, so, so grateful to have you guys back in. You better stay tuned for more. I'm your host, as always, over and out.